Welcome back. Industry experts are sounding the alarm over the impact of COVID-19 on the construction industry. Joining me now live with more is Andy Manahan, the Executive Director of the Residential and Civil Construction Alliance of Ontario. Andy, thanks for joining us. Thank you, George. So, I mean, is this partly a case of kind of, you know, gummed up gears, pre-pandemic bureaucracy, backlog, or did COVID, you know, sort of punctuate this thing, this process of municipalities having to tender and fund construction projects? Well, certainly with the city of Toronto, uh, there seems to be a backlog every year of getting projects out the door. But I think the pandemic has exacerbated the situation. And of course, with the pandemic, uh, the focus on municipalities right now across this region and elsewhere in the province has been on the operational side, whether you have transit systems or other social services that are required. And so the focus has been keeping the operations going, keeping the services going. But what we're hearing from our contractor members is the tenders for capital projects is starting to uh, dry up, certainly this fall. What kind of uh, construction projects are we talking about here, Andy? It's a full range. I would call it core infrastructure, uh, transit projects, uh, like we've seen recently in Toronto doing bus rapid transit, uh, roads, uh, complete streets, which includes bicycle lanes, so this is the mobility, sewer and water projects. Uh, and, you know, quite frankly, the municipal sector has been saying that we need better broadband services to connect people and businesses in a better way. So it's not just old style infrastructure, it's new infrastructure as well. But all of what you just talked about sounds like critical infrastructure to me. I'll give you an example, George. So, you know, we've all seen uh, public housing, Toronto public housing. Um, is well known for having thousands of units but not necessarily keeping those buildings in a state of good repair and the concern for us and it should be for all citizens is that if we don't maintain a good state of repair for other infrastructure projects we're going to start seeing more crumbling infrastructure everyone's aware of potholes but it'll be worse if we don't keep on top of it and Andy speak to the sort of echo effect the trickle down effect too uh, on the industry writ large. I mean, the way when we talk about auto plant closures and how they, they affect communities as a whole, what happens here? Yeah, I think what you're getting at is the multiplier effect. So it's not just the direct construction jobs, but there are suppliers uh, that you know provide materials. So that whole supply chain uh, gets disrupted. Those people are affected. Uh, for many buildings downtown, uh, you know, pits are required, so we need gravel, concrete, that sort of a thing. So it really is a whole supply chain uh, that, that will hurt in the long run if we don't address this issue quickly. And that's where the federal and provincial governments really come in. You know, we saw in the summer that there was an agreement between Ontario and Ottawa with mm -hmm. respect to a safe restart agreement. That was primarily for operations and supporting transit systems. We've seen a little bit of, you know, dribs and drabs of infrastructure funding. And I've got to tell you a funny line I read recently, and I don't mean to be demeaning or anything of uh, the Liberal government, but it was a situation where they said, the infrastructure programs from Ottawa take so long, it's like waiting for pandas in a zoo to mate. <laughs> and we all know about that one. Yeah, you know, well, look, when you talk about three levels of government here, Ottawa can print more money. The province can, uh, you know, shift money around and uh, do things with taxes and, and, uh, and you know, surpluses dip into that but municipalities they're they're bound by law i mean they can't run deficits and they're the ones a lot of times that have the final say here right so and, and they you know we're in a pandemic survival yeah. services have to come first right somebody's gonna have absolutely. to absolutely and i think we saw that early on in the pandemic where municipalities said you know we have to maintain transit services so we can get frontline workers and essential workers to hospitals and elsewhere uh, that kind of thing is obviously essential. So we're not saying infrastructure is more important than the other, but please, governments, be aware that this is a really vital way, and if we don't do it, it's going to impact our productivity and building up a civil society. Andy Manahan, thanks for your time. Great chat.